Celebrating entrepreneurs and creativity. Talking business pleasure, real life get together. Join us here. Welcome guys to another episode of the Creative Entrepreneur Podcast. Guys, you know what this is about. We look at turning creativity into careers and turning your passion into profit. Um, Before we do start, I just want to shout out our sponsors, Route 36, for the production um, and for just looking after all of our production needs on the podcast. I'm so, so grateful. Please do go and check those people out. But I just want to introduce our guest for today's episode. When I made this telephone call, I wasn't hopeful at all that he would come on this podcast. But I just thought, let me make the call anyway. And I'm super, super excited to announce Ben Francis, the founder of Gymshark, a billion dollar company that he started in his bedroom Mm -hmm. um, at 19 years old. And now we are sitting in a podcast studio Mm -hmm. that Gymshark, that Ben created. It must be absolutely amazing. Ben, welcome to the podcast. And just tell tell everybody who you are and just a little bit about your journey please yeah th- thanks for having me um yeah so my name's ben um i grew up here in the west midlands not far from where the office is now uh, and as a kid i just absolutely loved fitness so i i mean i'm sure we'll get into it i started many different websites businesses and built iphone apps before this but to be honest gym shark was just me wanting to be involved in fitness however i could um you know, we were one of the first brands to really be working with influencers, albeit at the time we didn't really call it that or realize what it was. Um, and ultimately we made, you know, fitness clothing and it's it's been a crazy eight years. I think we're eight, almost nine years old now. Um, fast forward to, da- to today, yeah, multi-billion dollar brand, 700 staff around the world, fastest growing company in the UK. I think we were the fastest growing company in the history of the West Midlands. Um it's been a crazy journey, but it's yeah, it's been a fun one and one I'm looking forward to chatting about today. Wow. Wow. Like, it's just massively impressive. And the, and the fact that you are from the Midlands as well is mm-hmm. just equally more impressive. And I, I don't think you, you rem- <laughs> you'll, you'll remember this, um, but when the news broke about, you know, um, Jim Sharp mm-hmm. now being a billion dollar company, I was like, Ben is from the Midlands. I need to message him. Like, I need to, like, some way, somehow. And I was actually in the gym when um, mm. the news broke, and I remember it clearly. And um, I seen it on, on Twitter, I seen it on my phone, and um, this was, like, half five, six in the morning. So I was like, I need to message him. And I, I was mm. so excited. So I picked up my phone, and then I was, and I, I said, nah, I'm going to voice note him. Mm. And, and actually, I, I remember it, and I remember exactly what I said, and... Um, Mom, if you're listening, please just <laughs> fast forward like a couple of seconds because I actually remember picking up the phone and saying, Ben, big up your blood clot sound. <laughs> like, and <laughs> um, and for those of you who don't know what that means, it, you know, it's a Jamaican word um, when you're cussing somebody out or when you're passionate about something and you do, there's just no other word to explain how happy you are about something. And for me, that just encapsulated how proud I mm. was because you were from the Midlands and you were doing bits. And I was just like, if you could do it. And I, I remember saying it in the message, like, if you could do it and you're from the Midlands, the inspiration that you're sending to so many young people, so many mm-hmm. young entrepreneurs in the Midlands is is amazing. And mm. that's what I love about you. And that's what I love about the brand. It, mm-hmm you have really challenged the status quo about what businesses and what entrepreneurs are. Mm -hmm. And you flipped it on his head and you showed a new version of entrepreneurs. So it's no longer suits. It's no longer briefcase. It's no longer all these, (laughs) like like what you you, you traditionally see, you know, you rock up in your tracksuit and you're a millennial and Mm -hmm. you, and how does that feel? How does that feel that you are now like a, you're flipping everything on its head and you're like a shining example to 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 young people um i don't know to be honest because i feel like i mean i, I mean i mean myself everyone at gym shark which well, we're all fairly similar you you know you'll have been to the office a bunch of times now and you'll have seen we, we don't take ourselves too seriously we're we're super passionate and serious about what we do and what we want to achieve but to your point we're not gonna 
you know, be, you know, wearing suits all day, every day. We, we don't, we just don't really think about that sort of stuff. So, um, listen, I feel super proud, right? I, I'm proper proud to be from where I'm from and that we've all achieved what we've achieved. Um, and yeah, and it was moments like when you dropped me that message and to be honest, as well as yourself, there was the, the outpouring of support from the Midlands, the Birmingham area has been incredible for us. And it, it is an amazingly proud moment, um, having, you know, grown up here. And I think growing up here, you do see a lot of, listen, there's a lot of incredible businesses from around the world. There's a lot of people doing amazing things in the United Kingdom. But more often than not, they're in the South, they're in the London area and, you know, more power to them. There's there's nothing wrong with that. But it is amazing to do something here and to also not only to do it here, but to keep it here as well. That's something I'm super proud of because, um, again, we didn't have to do that, but I'm super passionate about the area and the people that live here. I'd love that. And I think that's that's what's so amazing because you've literally created it here and mm-hmm. you've created jobs here and you've not only created jobs here, but you've actually showed people that there is a lot of talent in the Midlands and the Midlands are doing bits and, mm-hmm. and the Midlands is up and coming now and I think people are starting to take note and... It's because of people like you and, and Gymshark. They are, and you're right. And I'm I'm really fortunate. I mean, through Gymshark, I've been fortunate to be a, a part of many sort of other things going on outside of Gymshark. I'm currently working with a bunch of people on something called the the, the Midlands Engine. So again, it's all about sort of helping the, uh, the Midlands to grow, particularly from a commercial perspective. And the guys there, particularly uh, the guy that runs it is a guy called Sir John Peace. And he he talks about uh, something called brain drain. I'd never actually heard that term before about how there's so much here, but people tend to leave and, and, and move to other places. And and finally, I think that's now changing because to your point, there's so many more opportunities around here, whether it's people that are starting their own business, getting into creative endeavors or working for some of the many businesses that are here, such as Gymshark, mm. such as some of the large financial institutions that are now moving into the city. I think PwC have just taken up this incredible new office on, I think it's called Paradise in the mm. city center, these mm. new buildings, HSBC. Mm. There's, there's so much more opportunity here. And listen, I think it's it's amazing. It's something I'm proud of. I'd like to think we've played a little, a little part in that, mm. albeit not a massive one. Um, listen, it's a great time to be uh, be around here, I think. Absolutely. So, Ben, let's rewind to young Ben. Mm-hmm. Um, so, before Gymshark Ben, um, what was your childhood like growing up and was business, that was something that you were always exposed to and around or did mm. you decide that you wanted to research business and you was going to run your own business? Like, mm-hmm. Talk to me about kind of young Ben and what you was doing. Yeah, so um, so I grew up in a town called Bromsgrove, which is not far from here. Uh, my mum worked in the QE in Selly Oak uh, my entire life. Um, so she was incredibly, incredibly hardworking. My dad would work in Redditch. Um, fairly normal family, if I'm honest. Um, I had a super, super supportive family, and I think that's been really pivotal and important to me, especially in doing everything that I do today. Um, you know, great memories, massive Villa fan. My dad, we, my dad and my brother, we would go to Villa every week. We were season ticket holders. I've got vivid memories of my mom working long nights, coming home, dropping, dropping us off at school, then going and sleeping whilst we were at school and then waking up to get us from school. So I'd say I come from a fairly normal, but extremely hardworking and to be fair, supportive family. Um, although my parents didn't run their own business, my grandparents both did. So on my dad's side, they ran like a, a taxi company. And on my mom's side, uh, they ran a basically a furnace company. So big metal things that warm things up, basically. And and that was where actually I did my work experience. So I was sort of indirectly exposed from as long as I can remember to people running their own business, if I'm honest. Um, and particularly on my mom's side, I did work experience when I was, I don't know how old it is when you do work experience, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. And I worked in my granddad and we basically go around the Midlands and I would just sort of help him out as a labourer. Um, and he would tell me about some of the risks that he took in starting his business. Now, his business is it's not it's not quite as big as Gymshark. Um, it's more of a he was more of a one man band. And some of the risks that he took were were massive. And he would tell me these stories as a kid and I'd be so inspired by them about how he had like my nan, my mom, her sister to, to support. And he would just tell me about the stories about the risks he took. And at the time I thought, wow, that's cool. I've got a super cool granddad. I can't believe that he took all, all those risks for the, for the family to be able to, you know, afford the house. Um, 
And then later on, as I turn into my teens and I start, you know, getting involved in business and websites and apps, the risks that I wanted to take all, all of a sudden seemed really small. So my prior exposure as a young kid to understanding the risks that he'd taken and how much bigger they were to what I was then taking, I think it really put them into perspective and it gave me an ability to be very comfortable taking, a, you know, substantial financial risk. So that was probably very impactful for me. And like I said, the fact that both grandparents ran their own business and both of my parents were so incredibly, incredibly hardworking. Um, I think all of that really impacted me. Mm. Love that. Love that. And it just goes to show how how important influence is, mm. um, particularly in your you know, formative years when you're mm. growing and you're being exposed to <clears throat> You know, business and being exposed to risk. At such... And it's things that you don't even realise, right? Mm. So <clears throat> I'm sure he just did that because he was just telling me about it and he thought I'd be interested. And even me at the time, I didn't realise how important that was. I didn't realise after three years, after five years, it was after six, seven, eight, nine, ten years that I then realised the impact that it made on me. Again, my other grandparents running their uh, taxi company. And, and just seeing that, it, it's it, it, it does impact you. And one or two conversations as a young kid can go a hell of a long way. And there's there's so many periods or moments in my life, which I'm sure we'll get to, that have had huge, huge impacts. Um, moments where someone said something to me and it's really resonated, all the stars have aligned, or I've had an opportunity either through luck or through hard work. Um, but yeah, to, to your point, in your early years, pivotal moments like that make a massive difference. Amazing. Love it. So then fast forward a little bit to... Jim Chuck and to mm -hmm. Ben now thinking right I don't want to do anything else I want to run my own business whether it was Jim Chuck because I know you had other ventures mm -hmm. as well like run us through that era of your life and what your thought process was then so I so Jim Chuck wasn't started with the intention of this being it being this big business right there wasn't um the the same vision that maybe we have today I as a kid I wasn't great at school not that I wasn't like a naughty kid or whatever I just I, I couldn't get my head around it I couldn't work out how to apply myself to things to get the results I wanted um and then I think at 15 16 I got into the gym and at the gym I realized that I need to turn up every day I need to stick to a schedule and I essentially need to do as I'm told right so if the the program that I'm running says that you do three sets on bench press, you do three sets on bench press. And if I'm miserable, sad, tired, indifferent, then with all due respect, I don't have a choice. I, I do it. And I did that and I, I started to get really good results. As a kid, I was small, I was skinny and I wanted to build muscle and, and I finally started to. And then all of a sudden, there was this moment that sort of clicked when I thought, okay, so that really worked for me in the gym. What about if I was to apply that to school life or professional life? And it was through doing that, then all of a sudden I started to get good at school. I started to get good grades and um, that, you know, that made a big, big difference to me. So I essentially fell in love with fitness. Now, during that period, I was also messing around with websites. I was teaching myself to make iPhone apps. Um, so I just sort of morphed those two things together. So the, the iPhone apps were based around fitness. The websites were based around fitness. And Gymshark was one of those websites. Now, the reason that Gymshark was started was because I just wanted to be involved in fitness. All of my heroes are in fitness. Fitness had already changed my life. It had given me structure. It had given me direction. So I always wanted to give back to fitness however way I could. And and me and my mates, would we every year we would go to the Body Power Expo at the NEC in Birmingham, and we would love it. Um, so it played such a pivotal role in my life. I wanted just to be involved. So Gymshark was purely started because I wanted to be involved in fitness, not because there was this sort of huge vision as to where it would go. Wow. I love that. And the thing is that a lot of people start businesses because they feel that, you know, they've got a passion for it or, mm -hmm. you know, there's a problem that they want solving. Yeah. And I think what's amazing about you was that you just loved an industry so much. It was mm -hmm. just like, right, I just need to be involved yeah. in this. In, and in, and, I, and I was sort of like, I was sort of like agnostic as to how the, I was involved. So I was like, right, I love fitness. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so made a website that was like a fitness forum, made two apps that were all around fitness advice. Um, the Gymshark website was just a, a way of transacting and it was drop shipping supplements at the start. And then later on decided to try and make clothes that no one else was making. So I was less are like concerned in the early days about the product. It was just to your point, I just want to be involved in fitness. And however that is at the time, it, it didn't really bother me. I just wanted that involvement. Love that. I absolutely love that. Amazing. So then Gymshark starts, you start Gymshark mm -hmm. and 
you realize actually there was a gap in the market for yeah. clothing mm-hmm. um how how did that happen like what so so we 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 drop ship supplements and to those of you that aren't aware of what drop shipping is it's basically you can load your website up with a load of products that you don't actually own let's say for example you've got a supplement that you can buy for 8 pound you put it on your website for 10 ships directly from the um from the third party to the customer and you make a margin essentially for facilitating the sale so we did that and again it was just about involvement and then thought you know let's put clothing on and it was during this time this was a uh, about 2011 2012 2012 um i quickly realized that there wasn't really anything that we wanted to wear particularly because we was massively into bodybuilding and lifting um Now, again, stars aligning. At the time, my nan was doing a curtains course. There was a local lad that was into screen printing. Mashed those two things together and bought a screen printer and a sewing machine and started basically to hand make the clothes and did that for the best part of two years. And it was literally, in many ways, it's a selfish reason, right? Because I just wanted to make the clothes that we wanted to wear. And those were more fitted, tapered, string vest, tracksuits, T-shirts, hoodies, those sorts of things. Um, Because no one else was making them. You had... Many large American brands that probably weren't really resonating with us in Europe at the time, particularly in fitness, they were big, baggy, boxy clothes. Mm. Um, the European brands were far more sportswear, so it was it was more football. And listen, I love football. I love Villa. I always have. But in the gym, we wanted something that was really more fitted and tapered. Um, no one was doing it. So we thought, do you know what? Let's, let's give it a go ourselves. And um, spent actually every single penny that we had. I was working at Pizza at the time. Um, spent every penny that we had on the screen print and the sewing machine and, and started hand making the clothes from there. Um, it was a it was a cool experience. I was really lucky. Like I said, my mom, my nan taught me to sew. It was not anything I ever thought I would be doing. And it was weird because a lot of our mates were sort of going out, like, you know, going out into the city centre for nights out. And I was sort of sat there sewing. I've still got videos that my mom would video uh, send a video to me basically telling me how to use the sew machine and I would go out to pizza I would work my pizza shift normally 5 till 10 and then I'd come home and I'd sew from 10 till midnight 1, 2 a.m. sleep and repeat sort of thing so yeah I mean looking back it was a it was a it was an odd time but I absolutely loved what I did so I loved every day amazing and I think that's one of a really important lesson particularly in business around if there is a problem or if mm. you cannot find something that you want then there's an opportunity to create it mm. because chances are if you want it then other people would want it as well mm-hmm. and I think that's what you did and what was the I want to call it the signature item so in music mm. know, artists have like signature songs that people like that just sells and did Gymshark have like a signature yeah. item that was like this is it we did we did in the early days um but it took us probably the best part of two years to find it. Mm. And I think the thing that tried would have been the Lux tracksuit. And that was a tracksuit that we launched at the Body Power NEC Expo 2013, 2014. Um, and that was the, the thing that really helped elevate the brand. And again, it was because no one was doing it and it was a fitted and it was a tapered tracksuit. Um, we went to this event, we took it to the event. And funnily enough, because because it was we everything was handmade at the time other than that tracksuit we had to turn the website off so people knew the tracksuit was about but they couldn't buy it because the website was off because we were at the event and we sold it at the event and um listen it just went incredibly incredibly well there was a, a few other things that i think we did well at the event in terms of bringing youtubers over that no one was doing at the time um but specifically people loved this tracksuit and it went a little bit viral on on facebook in the time and that was probably the signature product that really helped propel Jim Sharks, you know, revenue and I guess attention in the early days. Mm, incredible. Okay. So I want to speak a little bit about the brand mm. itself and how you created this monster brand. And I'm not speaking about, you know, the log one, how it looks. I'm speaking about the how it feels and how it makes people feel. Yeah. So for me personally, when I first started training, which was probably about five years ago, I was like, I'm not ready to wear Gymshark. <laughs> <laughs> I just know I'm not ready to wear Gymshark. Give me my Puma any day to go to yeah. the gym. I'm not ready to wear, you know, no shade to Puma, but yeah. I'm not ready to wear Gymshark. And it's only when I got to a certain level in my training and on my journey, I was like, yeah. right, I can I can now flex in Gymshark. And the the feeling of wearing Gymshark in a gym, like, you, I feel absolutely sick. I'm just like, no one mm-hmm. can touch me. Like, yeah. And it's that feeling that resonates with a lot 
of people. Yeah. How on earth? Because this to me is the you know a billion dollar question. Mm-hmm. Hence, you've got a billion dollar brand. Mm-hmm. How on earth did you create that feeling? I think so. I think that's led by the community, and I think it's because essentially no one else is doing it right. So the whole thing, if we go back to why the brand was started, it was it started to make the clothes that we wanted to wear, and. At the time of starting the brand, sort of 19 years old, I wanted clothes that were fitted, tapered, and would accentuate the physique, i.e. make you look better with them on. Um, and I think that's where it started at its core, because then all the sort of the lifters in the early days started wearing it because, you know, they absolutely loved it. And essentially, as a male, it made your waist look smaller, your shoulders look bigger. Um, now, obviously, the brand has developed and grown since then. But I think in the early days, it was the cult lifting brand and i think that's probably what initiated that Mm -hmm. um and i think it's sort of like it's very much an aspirational brand right Mm -hmm. so your point is like a lot of the people that wear gymshark are the people in the gym the people in the know the people that are really into their fitness and again we are broadening that and trying to really support people on the journey because that's the other thing that we noticed by the way is gymshark was built very much again for for me it was built for the skinny guy that wanted to build muscle and we realized that we want to be as aspirational as possible to as many people as possible. Um, and now we're sort of starting to broaden the, I guess, the horizons of Gymshark and really be this aspirational to everyone brand. Mm. Yeah, incredible. I love it. So in terms of your leadership, mm. I want to touch on that a little bit because um, I think you are probably one of the most dynamic, forward-thinking um, and I would like to say relatable um, leaders mm-hmm. um, <laughs> of the century, and and I'm and I'm saying this because I've just have how much I've seen you do with Jim Truck and how much I've I've seen you um, do for your staff and how you ride for your staff. Mm-hmm. And I mean, even like you know when we first met at your summer party, I was just like, who just gives their staff like a an exclusive <laughs> summer party and just has like mist and like <laughs> art for dodger mm-hmm. and jk just rocking up and and, mm-hmm. and aston performing art shout out aston yeah. performing art. <laughs> um just rocking up to give you know your staff a summer party like free mm-hmm. bar free like just for for nothing like for me that i was there and i was just like wow like this mm. what an incredible organization like and what an inc- and it has to come from leadership mm-hmm. and it's that it's a culture so yeah talk to us about your leadership style and the culture that you've created in in Gymshark and why you why that's important for you. So the culture at Gymshark is important. It's it's our it's our top priority, right? And it, it's so difficult to explain. You've experienced it because you've you've been here, and I'm glad you had. I'm glad that you guys were at the summer party because you probably got you know you you got it. It probably hit you hard on that day because those are amazing, amazing days. Um, culture is our top priority, and I must admit I've learned everything I know about culture from Steve Hewitt, our CEO, who I believe you've met mm-hmm. as well and spent a bit of time with. He's an incredible guy. Um, and it's, it's incredible. It's, it's important for so many reasons because it, it's a culture where everyone feels welcome. It's a culture that's incredibly transparent. Like the, our levels of transparency are, are incredible. It's something I'm so proud of. I think in many ways, I think we even share more. I probably even share more on my YouTube channel than what some businesses will share to their, their internal teams. And I think, that transparency makes a big, big difference as well. And it really allows an environment of creativity, of somewhere where people feel comfortable, feel an area where people feel comfortable coming up with ideas, because that's the other thing as well. You need to create an environment where people genuinely feel comfortable doing that. And ultimately, what we've managed to create, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll emphasize, this isn't necessarily led by me. This is this is from Steve, and I know everything I know about culture comes from, comes from Steve. We've managed to create an environment where so many people want to be a part of it, but nobody wants to leave. And I think that's so amazing. And it helps the business. It's help. It's great for the leaders. It's great for every individual that's in the business. Um, and it just makes it a really special place to be. Love it. I absolutely love it. And like when I came, I was like, "This is incredible." <laughs> like I, 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 I said, you came on the best day. I was like, <laughs> and I, and I say this because we drove like a, um, a minibus with the team mm-hmm. because. Um, you know, he was doing the performance and there was a lot of us and I'm like nominated driver as, as well as my brother. And like, people were like, Oh, um, you know, after the performance, we can go. I was like, you guys can go. I'm <laughs> yeah. staying. Like, no, I don't want to leave. I'm yeah. staying. So, um, so I, I love that. And you touched on Steve there. Yeah. And I think for me, that's probably one of the most powerful stories that in business that you, that, that you have, because 
you, there was a point where you were like, right, I need help and yep. I'm going to throw my, you know, my ego out the window and, mm-hmm. and get people in to do jobs that I can't do. Mm-hmm. Um, I know my strengths and I know my weakness. And for me, I think that's so important for a entrepreneur to, yeah. to recognize that. So I, I kind of want to hear about that and yeah. what, that, what that time was like. Yeah, and again, this is similar to the culture question. It's it's difficult to really articulate. I mean, you've met Steve, haven't you? So you know what it's like. You 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 could probably understand it. Um, so in the early days of Gymshark, the company started to grow, and the numbers compared to today are obviously significantly smaller. But we started to get this level of traction. Um, I think I mentioned previously a couple of times about stars aligning, moments of luck. There was this period of time where. We had some issues with the product. I was struggling with a few of the bits. And I think I'd done two or nighters in a row. I'd, I was up for the third day in a row. And as always, I was, I'd was i always get the, uh, get the get a lift in at the gym. And I went to the gym and there was a guy there called Paul, who's a local guy, a local sort of bodybuilder. Um, and he's known as like the local business guy, basically. And he's obviously looked at me. And he's gone, you look knackered. And I said, yeah, I'm trying to run this business. I'm doing university in Aston. I'm... Um, I'm working at Pizza Hut. I'm struggling with this, this, and this. And I, I, I would ask him questions. And on this one particular day, he said, you look knackered. I explained to him what was going on. He said, listen, if he, he had an office down the road. He says, if you ever need anything from me, let us know. Pop into the office and we can just chat about everything that's going on. And and that was a pivotal moment. Because I think at that point, I could have almost gone arrogant and gone, no, we don't need help. But I, I guess my gut told me that we did. And, and we went and we met Paul started getting advice from Paul and Paul put us in touch with Steve. Paul and Steve knew each other. Um, and funnily enough, Steve also went to the gym that we went to as well. Just now, I understand that. I know you're saying we at that point. Who's, who's So that's, uh, this business is probably five or six people. Okay. So it'd be like me, Lewis, my brother, Joe, Dan, Craig. There's a cool. small handful of people. Um, I think, I think it would have been about 10 people. Mm-hmm. Um, so met Steve and Steve was, Steve was great. Steve, basically compared to me in 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 terms of skill set skill set was at the time um basically the opposite to me so i was product brand focused i was all about you know the events and everything and the customer and i just wanted to be in the community whereas steve had this skill set of brilliant people manager he understood operations logistics and finances inside out business structure and these were things that i didn't know and that's not because i well, it's not for any reason other than the fact that you don't know what you don't know. And if you're 19, why would you know all these things, right? Pleasure, real life, get to get them. Join us here.